I get asked all the time what kind of range this car has, and the answer is, I don't know. I haven't driven it more than a couple of dozen miles, and the only time range was an issue was when I left my house with very little charge to begin with. But the car is running well, and I have AAA, so I decided to stretch it to see how far the car would really go. Did I make it back home with plenty of charge to spare? Nope. In a Tesla Model 3, this battery would be good for about 250 miles, but this is not a Model 3. I mean, it's about half of Model 3, but aerodynamically, it is a brick wall. I know it looks all swoopy and aerodynamical, but it is not. The car weighs about the same as the Tesla that the battery and the motor came out of, so theoretically, it should get pretty good range in city driving, especially if I keep it under about 35 miles per hour, but who does that for seven hours? I am going to do something more interesting. I am going to drive from my house in Los Angeles up to Newcomb's Ranch in the San Gabriel Mountains. This will be a 120 mile round trip with about half highway driving and about half twisty mountain roads. Newcomb's Ranch has been closed for a while, but on Friday mornings, a smattering of car nerds from around the area cruise up to drink some coffee and hang out for what is called the Good Vibes Breakfast Club. I like good vibes, and cars. I predict the range of this car to be somewhere around 150 miles, so this should be a great trip with just a little bit of margin. The car was almost full when I left, full of uh, electrons or whatever, I don't know. The state of charge was 93%, close enough. By the time I got to the top of the Sepulveda Pass, I had lost 10% of my charge, so things were not looking great, but the pass is a big hill, so presumably I would get some of that back on the flip side. And I did. Things started to look better, and by the time I got to the base of the mountain, I still had two-thirds of my charge left. My stator temperature was running a little high, I think. I don't actually know what high is for this, but it's higher than it's been in the past. I should really figure out what maximum temperatures are for all this stuff. I stopped off on an overlook to check and make sure everything was where it was supposed to be. It all looked good. Ignore that bundle of wires, I'm in the middle of an air suspension install. Also, my parking brake is out of service, so I'm still using this technology. Everything's great, except for the fact that when I tried to leave, the buttons stopped working. So, I couldn't put it in drive. But then, they started working again. So that's weird. A few miles down the road, I found something amazing. This car is a blast to drive in the twisties. I didn't expect it to be bad, but it is old and somewhat heavy, so I didn't expect it to be this much fun, but it is so great. Of course, this shouldn't really be a surprise. It has modern suspension, fat tires, and the batteries are about as low as they can get, so the CG is basically at the floor. It needs an alignment, maybe a bit less camber and some more caster, and uh, somebody needs to clean the windshield, but overall, it is awesome. A few minutes later, with 40% of my battery left, I made it to my destination. 40% seems like it's less than half, but most of my trip back is downhill, so I might be okay. Shortly after I parked, a group of people walked towards my car and then right past it to check out a Pontiac Grand Am parked next to me. Huh. But plenty of people did come to chat about my electric abomination, and I had lots of good chats with other people about their cars. Good day. Good vibes. I like this place. I shall return but only if I can make it home. I headed back down the mountain, enjoying the curves, probably going a little bit faster than I should have considering my limited range, but downhill did end up being much nicer to my battery. A bit later, I passed Burbank with 26%. I guessed that I'd make it home with 12%, and I heard that Tesla bakes in an extra 3% on the displayed state of charge, which is, I believe, what I'm looking at, so it's looking good. Also, LA helped me by slowing me down to a much more efficient 30 miles per hour, so thanks for looking out for me, LA. I kind of wish I would have gone with a bigger battery in this thing. I looked at the range of the mid-range Tesla, assumed a slight decrease in that, and figured that I was good. But it's not a slight decrease, it's half. Then again, I probably won't be driving this thing any farther than Newcomb's Ranch, but I should probably figure out how to get it to charge at a public charging station, just in case. For now, I am charging at home, using the 110 wall outlet, which is quite slow. After a few hours, I had gone from 10% back up to 28%. Huh. I wonder how far I can make it on 28%. Let's find out. Friday rush hour traffic. Bad timing, Matt. But it's probably a good thing because it means I won't be wasting all my battery plowing this dump truck through the air at 70 miles per hour. Still, not super fun. I did get spotted by someone with a camera in the passenger seat and made it onto Reddit where people had opinions. I gotta say, the new side mirrors on this car are very nice, I can see now, and I can safely change lanes, which is my favorite way to change lanes. 
I definitely see now why they are legally required. This car does need some UV tinting on the windows. Modern cars have a layer of film in the middle of the window that helps block some of the heat coming into the cabin. This car doesn't have that, so just the sunlight shining in through the windows is a bit uncomfortable, especially after spending most of the morning in the sun. But as I inched my way through traffic, the sun started to set, it started to get darker, and I remembered something that I probably should have remembered before I left. Yeah, I never wired in the headlights. They're there, they have a pigtail, there's a fuse block, but somebody forgot to connect them together. Well, I guess we'll figure that out when we get there. And if you're wondering where there is, it's Bob's Big Boy in Burbank. Bob's Big Boy in Burbank is a boisterous bastion of burgers, Bentleys, Big Block Buicks, and the Wienermobile. There was also this pristine classic that was of little interest to most people, a maroon 1979 Plymouth Volari. My first car was a maroon 1979 Plymouth Volari. I swear I have not seen one of these things in person in over two decades, and it was such a surreal experience to see it again, and in the same color. The grill, the gauges, I remembered the smell. Man, I had a lot of fun in that car, but boy was it a terrible car. I went to the cruise in with a friend of mine who has a place in Burbank, so we swung by his house and did a quick and dirty wiring job to get the headlights working, and then the drive home. Those headlights are great. Good choice. I had 12% state of charge to make it back home, but it was an easy drive down the 101 and over the Sepulveda Pass. The pass is that hill I drove over earlier that day that took 10% of my battery to get to the top of. I like to live on the edge, apparently. But really, all I had to do was make it to the top of that hill, and then it's all downhill from there. As soon as the highway started sloping upward, the jag got slower, and slower, and slower, until I was at a crawl on the shoulder. I just need to get to the top of the hill, just right up there. Then I can regen all the way down and probably make it home. Just a little bit further, a little further. And just as I got to the top of the hill, the contactors opened and the car stopped driving. I found a pull off and I stopped the car. I considered calling for a tow, but I was technically over the crest of the hill. The car won't regen if the contactors are open. The contactors are these big switches inside the batteries and they have an unmistakable sound. When the battery gets too low and you keep trying to drive, they open, disconnecting the battery from the motor. I'm not sure why they do that, but I assume it's some sort of safety thing when you're trying to pull too much current from a dead battery, so I didn't really want to push it. But I also didn't want to wait an hour for a tow truck, so I shut everything off, let it sit for five minutes, turned it on, and the contactors closed. I coasted slowly down the hill for about four miles, getting regen braking where I could to try to get some juice in the battery for the last stretch. I did take the next exit so I wasn't on the actual highway anymore. When I got to the bottom of the hill, I drove very slowly towards my house. The car seemed to be doing fine on flat road, but even a slight incline and it would get real upset. 90% of the rest of the way to my house is flat. The last 10%, not flat. It's not all uphill, just a series of four small hills. But if I can get to the top of the first one, maybe I can use that momentum to get to the top of the next hill and then do that three more times. I almost got to the top of the first one and... So I coasted into a grocery store parking lot. I walked around the store and the alley next to it looking for a wall plug. At this point, I was four blocks away from my house. So even the painfully slow 110 volt charging, I only needed a few minutes, but no luck. But maybe I could let the car sit for a few minutes, close the contactors and get some more range out of it one more time. Maybe one more time is all I need. So I let the car sit for five minutes, turned it on and started moving again for about two and a half blocks. Damn it, I'm so close. I'm so close. God. All right, you can't see me in here because it's super dark, but uh, I am literally one block from my house. One block. This is the third time that the power has just gone away and the contactors have opened. Really hoping I can just let it rest for a minute, close the contactors, and drive one block. The problem is it really hates going up hills, even slight inclines. And uh, there's a pretty steep hill right before my house, but there's a downhill before it. So I'm gonna have to like, and there's a stop sign at the bottom. So I'm gonna have to blow through the stop sign. God, I should have gone with a bigger battery. Oh my God, here we go. Oh, there's like no freaking power. Oh, it's going. Oh, come on, come on, there's the stop sign. How many extension cords can I run together to charge this thing? Oh, it's 
right there. It's right freaking there. It's so close. Ah, oh, go, 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 go. Ah. Oh. So, three times now, it's ran out of power, the contactors have opened, and I've shut it off for a couple of minutes, and then turned it back on and it gave me a little bit of a boost. But every time it was a little bit less, and that last time was real short, and all I've got to do is drive one driveway, one house length. I'm parked in front of my neighbor's house. So we're gonna hit that on button, we're gonna see if we can make it up this slight incline into my driveway. Whew. All right. Range anxiety. All right. You can't see switches here, but I'm flipping switches. That's on. You hear the pumps running. And uh, I'll switch the contactors on. Okay. We'll put it in drive. All right. Oh, it's going, it's going. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make it to the driveway that's right here. But of course my gate is closed, damn it. All right, don't go anywhere, car. All right. Go Jack, go Jack, go, go, go. You're almost there. You're so close. Oh, oh, it's the home stretch rolling downhill. Oh, into the warm embrace of the garage. Well, that was fun. So uh, now I get to cut the uh, wires. Oh, see? The Contactors. That was it. It's over. Uh, I gotta cut the wires for the headlights and uh, call that a semi successful day. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't. And I will continue doing stuff like finishing putting the engine in there and putting a new engine in there, maybe putting a new battery in there, and probably need some new suspension. I got a lot of stuff to do. I'll see you next time. By the way, this thing says I still have 7.5% battery left. I'm going to go ahead and say that 7.5% is zero. That's good to know.